Hey, go ahead and have a seat and uh, take your Bible or your Bible app, if you would, and turn to the Gospel of Luke chapter 24. Luke 24 is our text. If you don't have a Bible with you or a Bible app on your device, that's perfectly fine. Grab one of the Bibles in the seats around you and turn to page 1051. Page 1051 is where you will find Luke 24. And as always, if you're here in the room and you don't have a Bible and you want one, please take one of those with you. It is our gift to you. Now, if you're a guest with us and you're new and you're like, can I really take a Bible? Yes, you really can. Uh, first of all, no one's going to be at the door checking you to see if you took a Bible. And secondly, there's only about, you know, 300 other people in this room that have exactly the same Bible, including me. So they're just going to think, oh, they already got one. So it's good. So um, anyway, glad that uh, you guys are glad. Because here's the thing. If you're online and you want a Bible, then let us know. We'll uh, mail you one, deliver one to you. We want everyone to have God's Word and read God's Word. Because we know if you read and apply God's Word, God will change your life. Uh, now, hey, I, I got to just say, uh, happy, Easter. happy Easter. Some of you are like, it's Saturday, though. Hey, it's, it's Easter in Jerusalem right now, and it's almost daybreak. So, uh, pretty cool that way. Uh, so, if you want to, it counts. In God's house, it counts. Uh, God's eyes, it counts. Uh, actually, Scripture says, don't let anyone hold you hostage about the day that you worship or the way that you worship. Uh, we're free in Christ in that way. But I do, I do want to say thank you to those of you that are normally Sunday morning people. So you know who you are. A lot of you make sure that I knew that you were here <laughs> on Saturday, and uh, you get extra credit, so thank you. Uh, and, and no, it just warms my heart as a pastor to know that there are some people who are actually listening to me when uh, I say things. So thank you very much for that. Last service, uh, which was our extra service, uh, was standing room only. So you guys picked the right one to come to on Saturday. Uh, you can actually find seats and praise God for that. So uh, how many of you like surprises? Yeah, see, some of you didn't even ask what kind of surprise. So <laughs> don't know about your judgment. All right, let me just put it this way. Okay. If someone threw a surprise party for you, how many of you would love it? Okay, a lot of hands go up. How many of you would hate a surprise party for you? Okay, spouses take note. There are a lot of you that one would love it, one would hate it, and so the one who loves it's gonna throw it for the one who hates it, and the one who hates it's never gonna throw one for the one that, you guys work on your marriages and just pay attention. So 14 years ago, to celebrate our 25th wedding anniversary, I decided to surprise my wife, Merelda, with a trip to Las Vegas. And that doesn't sound exciting for most of us because we live so close, but here's the thing. Uh, when we got married, Vegas was our honeymoon destination, and it was terrible, okay? I mean, it just it wasn't the right place, but we went there, and we had a, it wasn't a good honeymoon. The marriage worked out, so uh, that was good. But... Uh, so at 25, I thought, okay, I'm going to surprise her. I'm going to take her to Vegas. We're going to do it right this time. We're going to redeem that honeymoon. And, and I lined up all kinds of surprises throughout the week uh, with friends and things like that. So uh, most of those surprises she liked. Hold that thought. <laughs> Today, as we celebrate Easter, I want you to know that God loves to surprise his people. God loves to surprise his people. So if you are one of God's people, if you believe that Jesus is the one and only Son of God and Savior of the world, if you believe that Jesus died on the cross to pay for your sins, it's personal, and you believe that Jesus rose from the dead, and you have made a commitment to follow Jesus with your life, I want you to live your life expecting God to surprise you. Why would I say that? Well, if you read the Bible... Then, uh, which I hope you do, uh, you'll find that God surprises his people throughout Scripture. For instance, there was this guy, Moses, uh, that, that God said, hey, I want you to lead my people, the Israelites, out of slavery in Egypt. Moses didn't want to do it, but God convinced him, and Moses went, and, you know, there were the whole plagues thing. If you don't know the story, watch the Ten Commandments, Charlton Heston. So, or you can read it in the book of Exodus, either one. But, uh, so God did these miracles, and and finally, Pharaoh said, get out, take those people, go. And, and Moses led the Israelites into the desert. Well, then Pharaoh changed his mind, got the army up, said, go and capture them. And, and the Israelites find themselves trapped between the Red Sea and the Egyptian army. And they thought they were going to die or go back into slavery or just, you know, it wasn't going to be good. 
And God surprised them by parting the Red Sea, and the Israelites walked across on dry land, and the Egyptian army followed them and drowned. Surprise! <laughs> it's kind of a cool story. And then there's the surprise of this story that you've probably heard of. Maybe you didn't even know the reference to, but that's David and Goliath. Now, in sports world, that's like a huge underdog reference, right? Oh, David versus Goliath. But that actually had a place in history where David was uh, really an older teenager, and he went to a battle to take supplies. And when he was there, he heard this giant of a man, a professional warrior, challenging the people of Israel, and nobody was answering the challenge. This guy was saying, one-on-one, -on -one, let's go. Best God wins. And David's like, our God's best. I'll do that. And, and uh, his brothers got mad at him, and people thought, well, he's just a kid. He'll go out there and get slaughtered, and it's okay. Uh, and, uh, and he went out there and took a sling and five stones and only needed one to kill the giant. I mean, surprise. Nobody expected that. Nobody but David. And, and then maybe you've heard of this young lady named Mary. You know, she was a virgin. She'd never uh, been with a guy unmarried. She was, she was engaged to a guy named Joseph, and suddenly an, an angel shows up in front of her, Gabriel. And he says, Mary, you're going to be the mother of the Messiah. And she goes, that's not possible. I've never known a man. And he said, oh, it's going to be okay. The Holy Spirit's going to come over you, and you're going to conceive that which is going to be called the Son of the Most High God. Surprise! Right? I mean, that's, that's a surprise. She was not expecting that. And, and by the way, Easter is God's best surprise. Amen. Easter's God's best surprise. Luke chapter 24. Just look for the surprises in here as we read. It says, But on the first day of the week, at early dawn, they went to the tomb. Who is they? They are the women who watched Jesus crucified and buried. So they went to the tomb, taking the spices they had prepared. Why did they take spices to the tomb? Jesus died late Friday afternoon. They didn't have time to properly, you know, treat his body after he was taken down off the cross. So they wrapped him in a cloth, put him in the tomb, sealed the tomb. The women watched where it was, marked it, said, okay, on Sunday morning, we'll go back after Sabbath and prepare his body for burial the right way. So taking the spices they had prepared, and they found the stone rolled away from the tomb. But when they went in, they did not find the body of the Lord Jesus. While they were perplexed about this, behold, two men stood by them in dazzling apparel. And as they were frightened and bowed their faces to the ground, the men said to them, why do you seek the living among the dead? He is not here, but has risen. Remember how he told you while he was still in Galilee that the Son of Man must be delivered into the hands of sinful men and be crucified and on the third day rise? And then they remembered his words. And returning from the tomb, they told all these things to the 11, that's the apostles, and the rest. Now, they were broken, they were hopeless, they were defeated, they were despairing, and surprise, Jesus is alive. I mean, they were not expecting that at all. They had gone to anoint a body with oil and spices and wrap it up in, in strips of cloth and do it the right way, and Jesus isn't there. I mean, they believed Jesus had been defeated, and yet God claimed victory. They thought their lives were forever shattered, but God changed their lives in a way they never even imagined. They had given up hope, and suddenly their lives are filled with hope and joy and life. Easter is God's best surprise, but honestly, we don't always appreciate God's surprises. We just don't always appreciate it. I mean, it's really not so much that we don't appreciate the surprise as it is getting to the point of the surprise. You know, think about it. In the Easter story, Jesus' disciples, his followers, were surprised, horrified, shocked when he was betrayed, arrested, and condemned at trial to die by crucifixion. I mean, that was a heartbreaking, pain-filled, life-shattering journey. They had all their hope in Jesus and thought he was the Messiah and they were going to follow him and he was going to establish a kingdom. But God was getting them ready for a great surprise. Actually, God set them up for a great surprise. So uh, let me just go back to my anniversary surprise story. Okay, the crowning event in a week filled of surprises was a surprise vow renewal. Right, I'd invited family and friends. I'd gotten a venue 
And, uh, and then that, that night, I said, okay, you need to dress up because we're going to Phantom of the Opera, her favorite show, right? So we put on the fancy clothes. We got in the car, and I said, oh, because you got to have ruse, right? Got to do something to get them to the place. I said, oh, we have to stop by this church because I need to pick up something for Calvary. She was irritated. <laughs> okay, we're on vacation. Why do you have to do that? Why do you have to do it now? We have to go. And I said, oh, don't worry. It'll just take a minute. And then we ran into a traffic jam because of an accident on the Vegas freeway. Yeah. It was not really good at that moment. And she's like, well, just tell them you'll come later. And I said, no, I can't. It, it, we're fine on time. No, we're running out of time. We're going to be late. We're going to be, and call our friends. And I was like, no, we're fine. And, and finally, she's like, just forget about it. And I, like, I wanted to tell her, I can't because that's the surprise. So as it took longer and longer, as we inched along in traffic, and even as we finally got through the traffic and we're driving to the, the place, she is so angry at me. I mean, I've had the look a lot of times, but this one would have put me under the ground. I mean, guys, have you ever had your wife so mad at you in the car that you were afraid to stop at a stoplight because you thought she's getting out of the car? That's where we were. Okay, that's where we were. So we pull up to the venue, and, uh, and then she says these words, I am not getting out of the car. So I put 25 years of marriage on the line and I said, get out of the car and go inside. She's like, fine, slams the door. She is so mad at me. She walked in and she saw her daughters and she went from being angry to being puzzled. And then she saw her parents and she went from being puzzled to just a puddle of tears. And when we got to the vow renewal, she said yes again. I was, a, I was a little bit nervous there in the car. Um, so, nice story. What's the point? You know, right now, your life may not be where you want it to be. I mean, you may be broken, you may be hurting, you may be grieving. Maybe you're recovering, maybe you're in the throes of addiction, or you're just alone and afraid, unemployed. Maybe you're hopeless. You just have given up. Please understand, if you love Jesus, you are on the way to a surprise. Amen. Okay, you're on, a, you're on the way to a surprise. Now, right now, you're not enjoying the journey. Right now, you might even be angry at God. Why did you let this happen? Why have you done this to me? Why am I in this place? Um, but please don't give up. Please don't give up. God is getting you ready for a great surprise. You might need to be patient, or you might need to listen and get out of the car. <laughs> but just know that God wants to surprise you. He, he really does. And, and let me just tell you some of the things that God might want to surprise you with today. See, God might want to surprise you with love, not anger. Love, not anger. Uh, the Apostle John wrote this. He said, this is love. Not that we loved God, but that he loved us and sent his son to be an atoning sacrifice for our sin. It, it wasn't us begging God to love us, but it was God loving us when we were still rebels and, and he sent Jesus to pay for our sins. Why? Because God loves you. Please hear that. I mean, churches talk about God loving you all the time, and we kind of think in the abstract that God loves us in, you know, some kind of theoretical way. But this is personal. God loves you as an individual. He cares about you, and he wants to bless you. God is not angry at you, even if your life is a mess. Okay, God's not angry at you, even if you've been rebelling and disobedient. God loves you like crazy. And God, like any parent who uh, grieves their child's self-destructive decisions, God is grieving your pain and your self-destruction. He's not angry, but he's hurting for you and with you because he wants better for you. He wants to bless you. And so he wants you to know that he loves you. He wants you to know that he is for you and he wants to bless you. And by the way, that happens when we actually receive God's love. We receive it. Suddenly it changes the way we see the world. It changes the way we look at things. It changes the way we understand God. And some of you are angry and you let go of the anger and go, okay, God, I'm gonna receive your love. And if you don't know how to receive God's love, please talk to us afterwards. 
just, just talk to us afterwards. And, and our prayer team is going to be here at the front. They'd love to pray with you, talk with you. They can explain it. Find one of the pastors. We're all over the place out in the lobbies. Uh, and just come and talk to us. Lady found me after last service and just said, all right, I want to do that. I want to receive God's love. So uh, I pray today that you are surprised by God's amazing love. And then God surprises us with mercy, not judgment. Again, the Apostle John simply puts, if we confess our sins, if we confess our sins, God is faithful and righteous and will forgive us our sins and will purify us of all unrighteousness. All of it. Why? Because we confess our sins. In other words, if we're honest, a lot of times we feel guilty coming to church. A lot of times we avoid church because of guilt in our lives. And some of you are here today because some of your friends dragged you or bribed you to come. That was my idea. Uh, So, uh, actually, it was God's idea. And we're glad you're here, but some of you are like, you've issued those proclamations of like, well, if I walk in the building, the roof will fall in. No, we got good architects. If I walk in the building, I'm going to get struck by lightning. No. And and see, here's, those are statements of judgment. Judgment. That God's going to judge me, and so he wants to get me. And I just want you to know that God wants to forgive you. He's not angry at you. So a lot of people come to church expecting condemnation, fearing judgment from God and from people. Uh, It's not going to happen here at Calvary. We believe in this wonderful thing called uncomfortable grace. Okay, we're going to welcome you, and we're going to love you. Because God's desire is to forgive you, not condemn you. Let me say that again. God's desire is to forgive you of your sins, not condemn you in your sins. I know this because Jesus said it. A lot of you have heard uh, John 3.16 before, and, and it's very familiar. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son that whoever believes in him will not perish, but will have eternal life. So if you believe in Jesus, you're gonna have eternal life. That's the promise. Next verse, John 3.17, almost nobody knows it. Jesus goes on, he said, for, for the Father did not send the Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world might be saved through him. That's why Jesus came, because he wanted you to have mercy and not judgment. And, and, and the way that we have mercy instead of judgment is believing in Jesus. So if you've been thinking that God is condemning you, that he wants to blast you with thunderbolts, think again. Jesus died to forgive us of all our sins which means Jesus died to forgive you all your sins. All of them, if you ask. If we confess our sins, God is faithful and righteous to forgive us our sins and purify us of all unrighteousness. So I pray today that God surprises you with mercy. He just surprises you with mercy, that you leave here knowing that you are forgiven of all your sins. And by the way, if you've got questions about that, you're like, no, I feel guilty still, then again, prayer team's here at the front. Come talk to one of the pastors. We'd be glad to explain it to you. It really is as simple as asking God to forgive you. And then God wants to surprise us with freedom, not rules. Freedom, not rules. Jesus said, if the Son, talking about himself, if the Son sets you free, you are free indeed. In other words, Jesus is about freedom. And that might surprise some of you because a lot of people think that God, or at least church, is all about the rules. I mean, if you grew up like I did in legalistic churches, it was about more rules. Can't do this, don't do this, can't go here, can't see that, can't watch that, can't play that. You know, I mean, it was just a whole bunch of things you couldn't do, and so we didn't like the rules. I mean, so people think God and church is all about rules. I mean, after all, God did give 10 big rules, right? 10 commandments. You guys have heard of those, right? <laughs> See, here's the thing. All of God's commands are to protect us from pain. All of God's commandments are to protect you and me from hurting ourselves in the same way that parents and grandparents in this room would tell their children, don't run into traffic. Do you guys tell your kids that? Some of you do. What are the rest of you parents like? Go play in traffic? Did you tell your kids to, you know, not play in traffic, to look both ways before crossing the street? You kind of taught them that? Did you tell them not to touch the hot stove? Good, because you guys were worrying me for for a second. (laughs) See, that's what God's doing to us with the commandments. But but here's even uh, more than that. 
Look, some churches, some pastors love rules. They love to create rules. They love to try to enforce rules because they're trying to control people. And I want you to know that's not God and that's not what we do here at Calvary. We believe if the Son sets you free, you are free indeed. In fact, Jesus was teaching and, and he was asked about the commandments and he said, look, all of the commandments, all of them, the big 10 and all the other, like 600 commandments in the Old Testament, they all hinge on two commandments. Love the Lord your God with all your heart and soul and mind and strength and love your neighbor as yourself. That's it. He said, keep those and you'll have life. So God is all about freedom, not rules. And, and God wants to set you free. Free to lie, love, free to live joyfully, free to serve others. He wants you to be free to forgive people. He wants you to live free from addiction, free from despair, free from hopelessness, even freedom from boredom. And I pray today that you are surprised by God's offer of freedom. Because ultimately, God wants to surprise you with a new life. That's what he came to do. He wants to surprise us with new life. A life that begins when we choose to follow Jesus. A life that that is possible because of a surprise that we call Easter. Now, if God has surprised you today, can I just encourage you to take your next step? And if you're sitting here and you're kind of thinking, wow, this is different than what I expected, or, or you just sense God's presence in your life, can I just encourage you to take that next step, whatever that next step is? I mean, maybe it's to surrender to Jesus for the very first time. Maybe you've been religious, maybe you've been attending church, maybe you've never been in church before and this is the first time, first time here. And, but you realize, I've never surrendered to Jesus. I've never just said, hey, I believe that Jesus is the Son of God, Savior of the world. I believe he died on the cross for my sins. I believe he was raised from the dead. And I, I need to decide to follow him. Then, you know, we would love to talk with you. We would love to, to help you on that journey. That's why I said a lady found me out in the lobby after uh, last service and just said, I've never done that. I want to surrender to Jesus today. It was cool. The crowds were all around us. People were talking and laughing and we're just praying in the lobby. We can do that. That freaks you out a little bit. We got prayer team up here. Or maybe you just grab the connect card and write on there, I want to talk to someone about Jesus. We'd love to do that. Or maybe your next step is baptism. Maybe you're a follower of Jesus. You know Jesus has saved you. You know your sins are forgiven. But unlike the people who declared their faith in Jesus publicly in baptism earlier in the service, you've never done that. And they're getting baptized and, you're, and the Holy Spirit's like grabbing you and going, hey, 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 what about you? We'd love to help you do that. We, I just tell us when and where, it, at wherever there's water in a crowd, we're in. Maybe some of you, you're like, I want freedom, but I'm trapped in my own self-destructive choices and behaviors. Maybe some of you just need to show up Monday night here in this room at 6.30 for Celebrate Recovery. <laughs> See, we got some fans here in the room right now, and they'll tell you that if you want to find freedom, hey, God will meet you there, but he'll also walk with you through it, and these people will walk with you through it. And, and if you're like, I want freedom, but I don't know how to get there myself, show up Monday at 6.30. Or maybe you need to walk out of here and sign up for a life group. You're like... I've never connected with anybody at church. I don't want to really hang out with Christian people, except that my friends keep getting me in trouble. Maybe you need to upgrade your friends. I mean, you know, Scripture says the one who walks with the wise becomes wise. So check out Life Group. Stop by and sign up. Look, whatever your next step is, can I just encourage you, uh, grab one of those Connect cards and fill it out and reach out for help because what we'd like to do is help you follow Jesus. That's why we do what we do. We just want to help you be able to follow Jesus and experience the life that he has for you. Uh, so today, I'm praying that you are surprised by God's goodness, his grace, his mercy, his love, and his freedom. Because that's why Jesus came, and that's why we celebrate Easter. Let's pray. Father, you are so good to us, and we praise you for your goodness. We praise you for salvation that came because of Jesus' death and resurrection. We praise you for the blessings that fill our lives with family and friends, with food and shelter, uh, God, with the beautiful weather, all of it. We just know that it's a gift from you, and we thank you for that. 
But right now, I pray that your spirit would move in this room and in the homes joining us online. And God, people would hear your voice. They'd sense your presence. And you would give them the courage to follow you. Whatever that next step is, give them the courage to say yes to Jesus because um, they heard your voice and they want to follow you. God, even if it surprises all their family and friends, let them take that step because you love us. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen.